Welcome to TechSpace. In this video, we're going to be going over how to use different functions other than just the main function. So, so far, all we've went over is there's a main function, and we can enter variables in here, uh, take user input, and display output onto the program. But basically, everything we've been doing is inside of this main function, and that's what it's called. It's called the main function because that's what it is. It's the main function of your program. But Besides that, we can create other functions. And remember when there was the return sign and it said return zero? This basically meant the in that program. So you wouldn't want this outside of this uh, program or outside of this main function uh, because you don't want to terminate the program before the main function runs. So before the program can run successfully everything is ran through your main function so no matter how many functions I create they have to have some link to the main function or in order for them to work um, in your program so I'll show you how to create a function really quick and it's just how we created this function so we have a variable type and I'm going to introduce you to a new variable for a function that do not take any return value which means something that's not going to be doing a calculation or um, something that's just going to say print something out of the screen we can use the value void so void just means okay I'm just going to create a function it's not going to do any calculations it's going to be very simple and that's all it that's all it is so we're going to say void function 2 we're going to have no parameters and we're going to create the body with our curly braces so basically in here we can write anything that we would in a normal program so what we're going to do is just say see out this is my first program or my first function and then in that line and of course you can do anything else in here you can take in user input and blah 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 you can do whatever you want we'll just say we're going to take the user input of x and x is just going to be you know some number 34 whatever is the variable um we're going to create a double number 34 set it equal to you know 23 point blah 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 end it and then we're just going to say you know after I created that variable I want to see how my number in that line or actually no not in that line then we want to output the variable number 34 Again, this is like just an example of you know how to call how how do you enter information in a different function other than main and get functions together. So basically, the the basic function of a function is to group different tasks together. So if I wanted this function to do this task, so I have a variable called number thirty four. I'm gonna see out my number and just gonna say. Uh, whatever number is set to this so it's going to output this number then after that it's going to end line and it's going to say this is my first function and then it's going to say enter another number in that line and then we're going to save that number into a variable x which we have to create again inside this function don't set it to anything because the user is going to set it to something and then it's going to say here is your number. Okay, if I can get this written in here. Here is your number. Output X, whatever the user entered. Blah, blah, blah. Now when I run my program, nothing pops up. So you're wondering, okay, so I made this function, I did everything right didn't have any errors but where is everything at so basically to call a function we're gonna have to do something called 
exactly that calling a function. So, like I said earlier, everything has to go through your main function in order for it to work in your program. So what we need to do for this is take our function name and our parameter sign, copy it, go down to main, and paste that in there, end it with a semicolon, and that's it. So now that we have this, as soon as our main picks up, okay, function 2, it's going to look in the program somewhere for function 2, and it's going to say, okay, function 2 has already been created, I already know what it does, so I'm just going to go ahead and run it for you. Now when I run it, it says my number, and the number I entered or saved to that variable, this is my first function, and enter a number, another number that's going to be stored as x. So I can just go ahead, enter my number, and then it should say here's your number, and spit the number back out to me. So we're going to say 50, here's your number, 50. And that's how that program ran. So it said, okay, I created this function. And we're going to, you know, I'll do all these calculations, or not calculations, but do all this stuff inside this function. And then, after that, I'm going to call the function to my main. So, say you didn't want to call this function right away, and you just wanted it somewhere in your program for when you needed it, or if you needed it. Um, remember those if functions? So I could say, you know, if this condition, you know, if x is greater than y again just like we did last time then call this function so since there is no you know x and y we'll just say you know just to switch it up a little bit we'll just say num1 is greater than num2 then we're going to run this function so this is the function and you always have to denote the parameters. Since there's no parameters, we don't have anything in here. But we still keep them there. And we're just going to say, in our main function, okay, I made this function up here. And I want you to use it only if number one is greater than number two. So you're saying, okay, what is number one and what is number two? So I'm going to create an integer. And it's going to say, be called number one. I'm going to create another integer, it's going to be called num2. And then we're going to say to the user, enter to, well, enter the first number in the line. And then we're going to say, see how, enter the second number. And then in that line. Now we're going to save those, have the user input them into each one of these variables. And then when we run our program, what we'll get is okay, so we have this function, all this stuff in it, but we're not going to run that function unless number one is greater than number two. And this is all going to be decided by the user. So we're going to go ahead and run this program again. Enter the first number. So I'm going to say, I'm going to make this true. So we're going to make sure number one is greater than number two. So number one's 50, number 30, or number two is 36. Since it's, uh, 50 is greater than 36, or num1 is greater than num2, we get the output of this function. Now if I was to rerun this, and I was going to say, you know, the opposite thing, 36, which would be saved as number 1, and then 50, we're going to have a false, and this function is not going to be ran. So as you can see, the function got terminated. We didn't get all the extra information because the function was not called because the if statement was not true. So basically, we create functions that can be called into our program at any time, you know, and it doesn't have to be based on an if function. It could just be called as we had at first. So we could just say, you know, get rid of all this and just say, okay, I automatically know that I want to run this function. And it's going to go ahead, build and run that function for you. And, you know, there's your program. So 
you can either have a reason for that function to be called, or it, in this case, you know, we use the if function, or you can just blatantly say, okay, I want that function to run no matter what. But again, there's different ways of doing this. These are a few ways. You can either use the if function or more things. As we continue on, you'll be able to do with functions and, you know, uh, different types of operators that allow that function to be called at specific times. So stay tuned. We'll figure out everything that's going on uh, with this. But for now, just remember that we can create functions to hold information that can later be used in our main function. Um, and it can be called by using a certain parameters or certain contingencies that that function must first follow before it's called into your main function. So that's basically all I need to show you guys in this video. I'll see you in the next video. If you have any questions, please post them below. Please subscribe, and as always, I'll see you next time.